Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. Yeah, I talk to a lot of people about networking in lots of different fashions, and people tend to look at networking as kind of this this entity unto itself. This this thing we do, we do uh, individually. We're isolated. We're out there, and, and we network and it really relates to nothing else and we kind of they're they're good at so many things but they just kind of get themselves hung up on i geez i don't know how to network and sometimes i'll have conversations with people uh and i'll use their personal examples as relationships people who are just wonderful wonderful people and and know how to deal with people on a personal level and then they get into a professional sense and it's like oh, oh there's different rules here and explain to them, no, it's all the same thing. You know, God gave us one brain. You just, you know, there's no business compartment in your brain. You just operate the same way. And I think it's much the same when we talk about things in business as well. And and one of the things I see as closely aligned to networking is public relations. And who better to talk about this than a public relations person. So today I have on here Andrea Pass, uh, and she creates and implements public relation campaigns uh, for a wide variety of, of categories, consumer products, lifestyle, business to business, education, health, wellness, fitness, beauty, food, authors, not-for-profits, and it goes on and on and on. Um, but she is fond of the notion that we, just what I said, that these things are really closely aligned and that when people are when people are doing public relations, when she's helping clients with public relations, it's really networking um, and vice versa. So Andrea, welcome to the program. Good day. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I guess give us a little bit of a backstory on you know how you got you know Andrea passed public relations. Um, how you got into it? It was this a lifelong passion? You know, it's it's so funny because when you look back on your life, you realize you were always in the same direction. And I was always the publicity chair back in high school and in college. And even though I wasn't studying public relations, I was studying communications, radio, TV, film in college, and I was going to be a broadcast journalist. I was still the publicity and PR chair. Of every mm. club and every committee and every everything, I was writing the press release and calling the newspaper or calling the radio station, uh, putting flyers up all over the place, making sure that that event or organization was portrayed in a positive light so that there would be success, brand awareness and growth. So it was something I always loved. And when I graduated college and went straight to CBS Broadcast Center in New York City, hoping to become the next Dan Rather, um, I got into PR and I loved it and said, you know what, this is the direction I want to be able to do PR, to do publicity, to secure press coverage for clients in a wide range of topics. And one thing I didn't count on was my own business. And so Andrea Pass Public Relations happened about five years ago. And I've never looked back. I've never been happier. And I never thought I'd be an entrepreneur. So here I am, happy, clients happy, me doing my work, doing my thing. And I plan on doing it for a long time to come. That's, I mean, that's, that's a great revelation. Um, I'm a connector, I connect people. Um, I've been doing it, I won't say forever, but um, but it's, it's, it's always, it's kind of been in my DNA. Um, and I started out as a tax consultant. And when I left there, my dad said, I can't believe you took that job. <laughs> Why don't you tell me on the front end? That's so not you. Why don't you tell me? <laughs> um, six years. of, uh, But anyhow, um, public relations is networking. Networking is public relations. I, I love that mantra. Um, 100% because what you're doing when you're networking is you are publicizing yourself to yeah. that audience. And what you're doing in public relations 
is publicizing a brand, a service, a company, a product, a book, a nonprofit, whatever it, it might be. So they go hand in hand and anyone who is out there in the world of networking and those of us in business, we are always networking. Why, why, why are people not recognizing that networking is a wonderful public relations opportunity and how to go about networking effectively so that you are promoting yourself and your brand because the bottom line in networking is to secure more business. So yeah. why wouldn't you be out there looking at it from a different lens? I think the, the way I look at, I guess, networking and the hang up people have is it's like opening up the, the electrical box at home. I'm not an electrician. So I open that up and it's like, oh my God, I don't want to touch anything. I will die. Um, and then you call an electrician in and of course they're just, you know, they're flipping around like it's no big deal. So I could have done that. I could have done that too. Um, but because we don't know and we think that the stakes are so high that we just kind of freeze up. And, and so that's why people, you know, they don't realize, they don't realize I guess the the beauty and the simplicity of what it really is, you know, and they exactly. you know, go ahead. Like that that's the thing. If I have a client who's going to be interviewed on a television show, my client is dressing the part. Okay. You're not going into a TV studio in sweatpants, you know, unless you're a, an athlete. <laughs> right. But if you're a business person, you are dressing the part. You are looking professional because the goal of you doing that interview on that TV station is to spread the word with the goal of someone or many someones out there to want to purchase your service or your product or your book or whatever it is that you are out there talking about. So you need to look the part when you're networking. I know that on a Zoom screen networking, I'm going to take someone more serious if they're dressed. There was someone two weeks ago, a woman on one of my networking groups in a bathrobe Mm. With her hair in this messy bun, I'm saying, really, you couldn't brush your hair and put on a nice top. You knew the call is the same time every week or else yeah. don't join the call. But if you didn't take the time to take it seriously, to promote yourself seriously, then I'm not going to turn around and give you referrals because I'm yeah. kind of questioning what are you like in business? How are you portraying yourself? If you're unsure of how to do an elevator pitch in networking, then how are you going to effectively talk about your company on a podcast or an interview with a newspaper reporter or magazine reporter or TV reporter or blogger? What's your message? In public relations, we work on key message points. We, we like to stick with the power of three. You don't right. want to overwhelm right. someone with too many messages. But the same way you're out there doing an interview in public relations, you're out there promoting yourself when you're networking. What are your three key points? You can't do 25 things well. You might think you can. You know, you just said you're not an electrician. Right, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm not a dentist. I, I'm not a car mechanic. I go to the professionals. So, in public relations and in networking, think about all of the things that are the same. In public relations, you are promoting a brand. The brand could be you, or it could be something else, a bigger company, a bigger product, whatever it might be. But in networking, you are promoting your brand. Yeah. Same thing. So people who haven't realized that public relations is networking and networking is public relations, today is the day to open your eyes and recognize that. Well, I, especially with social media, I mean, that ought to be a tip off because that's really what, and I'm, you know, I'm not talking about hardcore pitching a product. I'm talking about just putting your best foot forward. And that is so important because in public relations, when I am securing press coverage for my clients, I am then sharing that press coverage with the client and recommending that their social media team put that up on their social media pages 
and effectively tag the media outlet. So whether it's a podcast or a television or a newspaper or whatever it might be, tag that individual because that could lead to more eyeballs. And so whereas press coverage is not a one and done, unless it's, you know, this event is having happening on this particular day. But right. other than that, press coverage can be and should be evergreen so that you can repost it in three weeks, five weeks, six months, eight months, a year, two years, because it's content that people are eager to receive and absorb. The same with networking. You're providing an audience with content so they want to come back to you. I remember meeting Andrea Pass, public relations. I want to talk to Andrea again, or I remember Andrea because she taught me something. She didn't sell me something. She taught me something. And networking is about educating, not selling. Because you know, you're, you're a networker extraordinaire. So you know it's all about, you know, you do business with people you know, like, and trust. Well, if you don't know them, how could you like them? How could you ever trust them? Yeah. It's the same in public relations. I am getting a message across to the media about my clients that my clients are worthy of that interview or that quote or that product or book review. It's the same thing. They're so intertwined. Well, it's, um, and you could speak to public relations and you know, I look at networking as just creating <clears throat> awareness and confidence in somebody because they might not be in the need right now. Chances are they're not, right? Trying to sell a house or need insurance, they might. But chances are they don't have the immediate need, but you're just making awareness. This is what I do. I'm an attorney. Um, been doing it for a number of years, blah, 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 blah. And then when that need comes up, then you're top of mind. And I kind of see the same thing with press. You know, it's an article out there about a company. Um, nobody's necessarily picking up the phone and saying, hey, we need to do business with you. But it just kind of creates that. It, 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 well, it builds a brand, it builds trust, right? And what's different about press coverage and press coverage that you put out there on your website and in your marketing materials and on your social media, and it mm -hmm. can be used over and over again, you are creating, cre we are sharing content that someone else created. Because so many times it's content you created yourself. That's where the difference between advertising and PR comes in. An ad, people are skeptical. They know yeah. that that company created it. But in PR, those editorial words came from the producer, the writer, the host, the editor. You might have said them, but they're deciding what words they'll include and what words they'll leave out. So if they're including you, someone in the media, then you're important enough to be included. And that's where there's that difference between advertising and PR. And so the same in networking. You're important enough because a networking group might have asked you to be their keynote speaker. And when I go to networking events, I don't want to be sold. I want to be educated. Here's this great opportunity for me to educate people on public relations. I have someone who's going to be speaking at a group I'm going to in a few weeks, and their topic is referral sources. She's going to be referring to a book she wrote and talk about how you get referral services. And she's teaching. And I think that's a value to then share on your social media. I'm going to be the speaker at XYZ. And whether five people show up or 500, no one's going to know that, but you were important enough for them to book you to speak at that event. And when people then Google you, that's going to pop up. When I Google myself, and yes, I Google myself. Every business person should be Googling themselves. Why wouldn't you? You want well, to know who's talking about you. I, well, I was my, that was my question. Why would, why would somebody to answer that? I mean, I'm, I'm not pushing you, back. Go ahead. No, but Frank, the reason is, is that you need to know, are others talking about you besides you? Has your name appeared anywhere that you didn't know about? Did somebody quote you on a podcast or in a story that you can then use? on your social media, on your website, and Google your competitors. If the press is talking about your competitors in a positive light, 
and you're not out there doing public relations, well, you're missing the boat because if someone is going to be doing a search, you're not going to pop up in all of that. They are, and suddenly they're more important because the media recognized them. So it's very important for business people of any size to Google themselves, Google their business, Google their competitors. But also it gives you an opportunity to see, oh, my competitor is speaking for this organization. That's a key organization for me. I should join their group, show up a few times and then volunteer to be a speaker. You never know. And that's, that's the beauty of being out there and networking because you just never know who's going to be listening, watching, absorbing, reading and saying, today is the day I'm going to hire this person. Right. I, I totally agree. I totally agree. I had somebody Google their name and it was useful because somebody with a similar name was coming up in the feed, in the, in the, in the search, search results and not for a positive, you know, but at least then they could get ahead of it and say, Hey, ain't me, not me. That's a different Frank Hagen or whatever, you know? Right. But uh, that gives them the opportunity to say, yep. I need to do press. I need yeah. to be a speaker. I need to be involved in my community. I need my name to be out there more often so that that other person is pushed down in a search and they're higher in that search. But if you don't bother with the search, how would you know? So, I mean, I, I always joke that I never took mind reading 101 in college. <laughs> it, you're not going to know these things but if you're not out there promoting yourself with public relations or hiring a professional to do that for you, then how is anyone learning about you? And if you're not networking, how are you growing your business? Yeah. Because you have to be out there to grow your business, whether you're attending trade shows and having a booth at those trade shows or joining organizations or advertising, public relations, marketing. You need to be there in order to get those referrals that will lead to more business. And that's what we all want, no matter what the size of the business is. Yeah, absolutely. How often should somebody Google themselves? Oh, every few weeks. Okay. It's not a, don't do a daily thing. It'll make you kooky. But, yeah. but I mean, there are other people that have the name Andrea Pass. And because my last name is a word, it'll appear in a sentence. You know, Andrea passed the soccer ball or whatever it might appear in the sentence. So there are other people out there, but no one that does what I do, which is why I'm constantly referring to myself as Andrea Pass Public Relations, because that way it differentiates me from any other Andrea Pass that's out there. Are, are there programs available that keep an eye on the internet? Like does Google have, Google had something at one point, I, I think. Yeah, I mean, you could do Google keywords and, and Google searches and that will pop things up, but it doesn't pop up as often. Um, and, and I'll do that for clients of mine and things will pop up and other things won't pop up. So yeah. nothing is, a, nothing's a hundred percent, but but as as a business person, you need to know what's happening. You need to know what's out there and you need to know what you need to do to either grow your business or keep your business consistent. Okay, um, let's shift gears here. I want you to have the opportunity to talk about Andrea Pass Public Relations, um, the types of clients you're looking for. I know you work with all kinds. Um, uh, you know, the types of, I guess the different types of things you do, the types of things you go out and speak on, um, this is your opportunity to self-promote. So um, please. Well, thank you so much. Uh, in Andrea Pass Public Relations, I am looking to connect with businesses, services, consumer products of any kind, uh, and authors and nonprofits who have a budget to pay for my services. And my services include securing press. That's my lane. When I went into business for myself quite a number of years ago, there are so many aspects to PR. Social media could fall under PR, speaking engagements, um, trade shows, 
bylined articles. There are too many categories. So I said, I'm going to go in the press lane because I happen to love that the most. And so I secure press coverage for my clients. And I joke that I'm a PI and PR. Mm. I'm a private investigator searching for that next public relations opportunity because you or a client may not know what's out there. And I don't claim to know everything that's out there, but suddenly I meet someone, I'm referred to someone and they're out there. And I'm like, that could be a great opportunity for my client to have their product reviewed, their book reviewed, be a guest on a podcast, be featured in a blog, to reach different touch points. So I'm always looking to meet new people who have businesses, whether the book is coming out today or six months from now, or it came out six months ago. If you never did PR, now's the time. If your product, a consumer product, a fitness gadget, a pet gadget, cookware, kitchenware, what have you, if no one ever talked about it, well, we can start today. So for people who never did PR, I like to work with them, to educate them, to set realistic expectations. I had a call the other week. Um, I just want to be in the New York Times. That's well, it. That's all. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I said, that's not happening now. The person is creating an app. The app has not launched. Until the app is around a while and you have X number of downloads of that app and feedback and testimonials, I wouldn't even go to the New York Times because I don't want them to try the app and something goes wrong because the app hasn't had all the kinks worked out. So I said, yes, in the future, I could pitch the New York Times. But to start out, I would recommend XYZ based on what the app is about, those audiences. And you have to remember that everyone makes a decision based on different touch points. An example, I had a client who had a consumer product. The same week, the product was reviewed in Huffington Post and a mom blog. Huffington Post, 1.5 million unique views a month. Little mom blog, 900 unique views a month. Zero click-throughs from the Huffington Post. 50 sales from the mom blog. You have to recognize that it's not just I should be on the Today Show. But maybe you need to be on a show that's targeted toward your market or your audience, because that's who's going to move the needle for your business. So I'm out there explaining to my clients and setting realistic expectations. Mm -hmm. And I think that it is my authenticity that people are hiring, my honesty. I won't get on a call with a prospective client and, oh, yeah, I'll get you on CNN. They may not be CNN material. So it's important to be honest. And when I went into business for myself, that was a really important goal that I wanted to meet, my honesty. Because so many people have had bad experiences with public relations because people took their money and did nothing for them. And that's not what Andrea Past Public Relations is about. I have another story, someone I met networking. So I was on a networking call and we ended up in a breakout room. And we did a call a few days later, one-on-one, -on -one, get to know each other better. And she said to me, oh, goodness, I wish you were close to Philadelphia. It would be great if we could get together. I'm in North Jersey. So I said to her, going from North Jersey, I have a meeting in Philadelphia in two weeks with a client of mine. Where can we meet? So I drove a half hour out of my way. She drove a half hour out of her way. We met for breakfast. Well, I felt like I knew this person forever. PR person for them, eight or nine months, did nothing, not even emails, ghosted them and got paid. I said, that's not my, my MO. I said, number one, you're going to hear from me throughout the week, many times. Press will happen. Recommendations on other things will happen. And now I have been with that company three months already. And they look forward to extending our contract because things are happening and moving and I'm not ghosting them and I'm making other recommendations. So I'm looking to meet new people because I don't know if they're going to want to hire me today, but they need to understand what public relations is, why I'm the right choice. And if I'm not the right choice, because we're not all going to jive, I will be honest. I had someone with a really high tech product. And I said to her, someone I knew who I had represented years ago at a different company, I said, 
I don't have the knowledge in this area, but you're good, she said. I said, I will stress out because I won't be producing the way you want me to produce. I can't go into this. I can't ruin our relationship and nor do I want to lose sleep. And so I made other recommendations and we've kept our relationship, but I am not her PR person and that's okay. We're not always going to be the right person for every business. What's the best way for people to get a hold of you? Um, Andrea Pass PR.com. That's the website. That, that is works. my website. I have an appointments tab on Andrea Pass PR.com. Feel free to make an appointment, but make sure you are making reference to this podcast in the comments so I know that that's how we met. That would be great. Andrea, I really appreciate your time today. It was wonderful talking to you about networking is PR and PR is networking. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is the copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.